All right, continuing on with our chapter seven transport um, discussion, we're gonna look now, we already talked about passive transport, which was, does not require energy. So now we're gonna talk about active transport, which does require energy. So active transport uses energy to move solutes against their concentration gradients. So again, diffusion is passive um, because everything is going down its concentration gradient from low. Sorry, from, I was already in my active transport mode. From high to low, okay? Um, other transport proteins move solutes against the concentration gradient or up the gradient. So from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration, okay? And because this is moving against the normal flow of things, it requires energy, okay? And diffusion can happen um, just by itself or it can be facilitated diffusion. Uh, no matter what it is, it's always moving with the concentration gradient from low to high. Um, active transport, or when you go against your concentration gradient, so going from low to high, always requires a transport protein. Transport protein. Okay, active transport cannot happen without a transport protein. Okay. Um, so again, active transport moves substances against the concentration gradient. So from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Uh, it requires energy, usually in the form of ATP. Um, and it is performed by specific proteins embedded in the membrane, transport proteins. Active transport allows cells to maintain concentration gradients. Um, that differ from the surroundings. And these concentration gradients, you, you will see over the course of our time together this year, um, are an extremely powerful thing, okay? You can store energy in a concentration gradient. And this process is how cellular respiration works, it's how photosynthesis works, it's how a lot of our major systems work, our major metabolic functions. Um, and one of the um, transport proteins involved um, in an active transport system is called the sodium potassium pump. So this is a classic example of um, an active transport protein if somebody ever asks you, um, perchance in a essay question, um, what is an example of an active transport system, they want you to say the sodium potassium pump. So let's see how it works. Uh, so here we have a membrane. We have inside the cell, outside the cell. And if you look here, it gives us the concentration gradients. So there's a lot of sodium outside the cell and a, just a little sodium inside the cell. So the sodium potassium pump, which is this purple thing here, starts off being open to the cytoplasm. It has three binding sites for sodium ions, okay? So they bind and the binding of them uh, causes the hydrolysis of ATP and a phosphate group gets transferred from ATP onto the sodium potassium pump. This causes a conformational change or a change in structure, and it switches from being open to the cell to being open to the extracellular fluid, okay? Different form, different function. So now the sodium binding sites um, kind of push out those sodium ions to the exterior of the cell. And now we have the binding sites for potassium are open. And again, we're also moving potassium, if you recall from up here, low potassium outside the cell, high potassium inside the cell. So potassium comes in to bind, we're going down this way. Um, potassium comes in to bind to the two binding sites, two molecules of potassium. This causes the phosphate group to be released 
and you'll have an unphosphorylated form of the pump. And the unphosphorylated form, if you recall, is open to the cytosol. So it switches its uh, conformation, and then the, so the, the potassium is released into the cell. Okay. Um, now, if you look at this, um, it, we're not just moving the concentration of these um, ions, keyword being ion, but if you look, we're also moving charge. So here we're taking three positive charges and moving them out of the cell and two positive charges moving into the cell. So the overall result is that the outside of the cell ends up being more positive. We move three out, but only two in, okay? So we're up a positive charge on the outside of the cell, okay? And if you keep doing this continually, you can create not only a concentration gradient, but an electrochemical gradient, an ele a basically electricity. Um, so this is something that the cells use. They exploit this process to create these gradients, store energy in them, whether chemical energy or electrical energy, and then use that energy to drive um, other reactions, okay? So this is just kind of a summary cell. Um, active transport moves requires energy in the form of ATP and moves things against the gradient. Passive transport does not require energy, so things are moving with the gradient, okay? Um, you have simple diffusion, which is just movement of a solute with its concentration gradient, or facilitated diffusion, um, which uh, is, again, still diffusion, still moving with the concentration gradient, um, but with the help of uh, either a channel, pro channel protein or a carrier protein. Um, so let's look at um, another type of active transport, an ion pump. An ion pump is used to me measure membrane potential. And the sodium potassium pump is also an ion pump. So membrane potential is a voltage difference, a difference in charge across the membrane. Okay, Voltage difference, it, voltage is created by differences in the distributed, distribution of positive and negative ions across the membrane. And this is a very powerful thing. So if you have a voltage difference and a concentration um, difference, the two together are called an electrochemical gradient, okay? Um, and this can move um, ions across the membrane. So there's the chemical force, which is the concentration, and the electrical force, which is the charge, and if we look, um, the type of transport protein that does this is called an electrogenic pump, okay? So sodium potassium pump is a major electrogenic pump because it's pumping ions, pumping charge as well as concentration gradient. There are other types of electrogenic pump that are used in other organisms um, called proton pumps. And proton pumps basically function similarly to the sodium potassium pump um, in that, again, it requires energy to move ions against their gradient, okay? Electrogenic pumps store energy in the gradient, and then that gradient, the energy in the gradient can be harnessed for cellular work. So let's have a look. So here's an example of a proton pump. So it is pumping protons, or H+, plus, um, across the membrane from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Because it's going against the gradient, it's gonna require ATP, okay? So we're creating this um, concentration gradient as well as a charge gradient, way more positive charge out here than there is inside the cell, okay? Now this, let's go back to this. So this gradient can be used. So um, active transport is used to create a difference, to create a gradient. And then once it's created, um, basically what the cell, all the cell wants to do is make it be equal. Mama nature wants equilibrium. She hates it when things are different. So 
these ions naturally want to diffuse back to equalize the difference. And we can kind of utilize that um, tendency of the cell and use it to drive other reactions. And this is called co-transport, okay? So active transport of a solute indirectly drives transport of something else, okay? And plants use this a lot, okay? So they create a gradient of hydrogen ions by a proton pump, and then that will drive the transport of nutrients into the cell, okay? So you have a proton pump here that creates a gradient pumping protons out of the cell. So you get a cons an electrogenic, um, electrochemical gradient where you have a concentration gradient as well as an electrical gradient. And then the diffusion of um, hydrogen back into the cell is gonna release energy from the gradient and that energy is gonna be used to transport sucrose across the membrane. Again, this is active transport of sucrose. And again, this is diffusion, so that's passive um, uh, diffusion of the hydrogen. So this passive diffusion of hydrogen ions back in um, releases energy from the gradient and is that er energy is used to transport sucrose um, uh, back in. And this is called, we call this the sucrose hydrogen co-transporter. And you see sucrose doesn't cross the membrane because it's polar. Okay, it's a sugar. All right, um, and that's it for active transport.